They're so proud of me, so proud of me. So proud of me. They're so proud of me. All right. Yes, sir. Cage Breakers, we out here. This is the Cage Breakers show. Not everybody's an athlete, but you can learn a lot from an athlete. And today I have a special guest, somebody who's really out here impacting lives, changing lives, um, leading these young men to the next level. Somebody who's just doing a lot of great work in the community. Um, my guy, um, I'm, I'm proud of this guy. You know, we have uh, Mr. Mr. Channel 4, C4, Mr. Mr. Greg Thomas. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you for having me, bro. Definitely. Yeah, man. Let's 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 get into it. For the people who don't know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, man. I'm uh Gregory Thomas, Coach Thomas, C4, Channel Four. Um, I'm from California. I was born in Richmond, Virginia. I'm uh, from Long Beach, to be a little bit more specific. I went to Colorado Mesa. I went to Long Beach City College before that. But uh, Colorado Mesa, I graduated from Limestone College in South Carolina. I started uh, my coaching career there. Um, and then I navigated over uh, the Colorado after I graduated um, from my daughter. Um, that pushed me over on this side. It was just a new journey for me. <laughs> um, I was over in Grand Junction, Grand Junction Central. That's when I had the opportunity to work under uh, uh, Sean Marsh. Um, and I hope work out, you know what I'm saying, get all those boys under control, get the passing game right with, uh, you know, Max Marsh, Cole Taylor, you know, just those different different guys. Pushed up to that Eagle Crest area. Um, the one year right after that, um, after that, Rock Kane, <laughs> and now, you know, I'm just mainly uh, Team Four Gorilla, but mainly just my training more than anything. I wanted to take a step back from the high school setting um, kind of a little bit more helped me recruiting as well, you know, not being able to just like if I'm coaching that Rock Kane, I you know what I'm saying I'm focused on that team, that team. If I'm actually yep. sitting around going to all these games, I get to see my boys, man. Yep. That more than anything, I get to rotate them, but uh, I get to see some talent that uh, man, I think I think this year's signees more than anything, um, is more deeper than it's ever been just because of the amount of recruiting that we did. For sure. Yeah, that's just, you know, just me, just me. Nice, man, nice, man. Take us back to, you know, briefly, just coming up in California. Um, yeah. how, how was that? Um, <laughs> Man, it's an experience. Uh, it's a roller coaster. It's, man, you got your days. You got your days. Uh, you got your days where everything is perfect. You got your days where... You know, some can happen at any point in time. Uh, you know, I had a good, uh, good upbringing, but also made a lot of stupid decisions. Um, so I didn't really help myself as far as when it when it comes down to it. But um, for the most part, I loved it. I loved it because it made me. Um, it made me who I am today. I but like all those L's that I took, man, that it kind of shaped me up to where I am now. I mean, Channel 4 itself was originated, um, thought of, uh, wasn't made a, a thing, but man, I was 18 and that's when it first, you know, started clicking in my head. Um, Talk about it. Long Beach City College, I had to make that move just because, again, messed up in school, um, running the streets stuff like that was going on, went there. And that's when my, uh, my football career kind of took a turn, man. It, um, I go from never having an injury, never having a problem, you know, just rolling, just fast, probably weren't the strongest, but I was fast. Um, get the Long Beach city college. I mean, third game coming in third game. I mean, I had, um, I was getting a little PT at the slot position, but mainly kick return, punt return. That's where I was getting my money. Um, I want to say I had everybody by like 100 to 200 kick return yards. In game three, I'm, I'm leading, going after it. Got Wyoming giving me interest. I'm getting, some, I'm getting some notice. Man, I just make a move. You know, my knee just ACL, MCL, lateral meniscus, disco, dislocated patella tendon. I'm like, oof, you know. 
then I run back to the streets, you know? So it's like, that's how I felt like California was, you know? It's like everything work out, working out for you, and then either you in the streets and something happens, or, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, or somebody got something to say, whatever it is, anything, it's just, just like that. And um, I, I I loved it because I continued, continuously kept getting hit with these uh with these with these bumps in the road and I, I'm mm-hmm. like I gotta find a way around it I didn't have I had my mom there she was my rock she'd do everything for me um but as far as the communication factor I ain't really have you know my dad there as much but let me you know help me through this help me through this now I was kind of like really figure it out myself and mm-hmm. um you know some big OGs in the, you know in the streets but how much of that is good advice you know <laughs> Salute, salute to the OGs and everybody um, guiding us the right way when we go astray. Yeah, you know, um, I want to ask you, bro. So, you went to Long Beach Community College, City College, yeah, Long Beach City College. Okay, yeah. what even going to that point? Because I know you, I know in high school you was doing your thing, mm-hmm. but you know you talk about running the streets and kind of taking those L's and just you know bumping your head a couple times. When was that moment? Because I know, especially being from Cali, you in high school, you know, you you balling out, you seeing all your guys getting all these offers, you know, you like, dang, I messed up. They going to all these schools and I got to go to this school right here. Mm-hmm. Talk us through that. Man, that was the hardest. Um, that was the hardest because for a long time, I said it was an excuse. Um you know, I mean, I owned it and I learned how to, you know, basically it kind of helped me with my process. And when I got a little older, when I had to go through counseling and therapy and stuff like that to get my mental back. And I realized that I needed to let it go. And I didn't even realize I was letting it walk with me for so long. Like, out here I am graduating out of college. Uh, I'm a dad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, and I I go back into my, my therapy session and she tells me, you're still walking with that, with that, with that, with that. Uh, as a guilt, I don't know, or you still beating yourself up that all your friends is in the NFL, you know, like they are in the NFL. Um, not saying that that was me, my path, but I was right there with them. And I ball with them. I did the same thing with them. So who says that it couldn't have been me, you know, at the same time, but I didn't do my part in the classroom, but it was, mm. it was my counselor. Right. So I had that minimum, GPA to be able to be NCAA um, eligible. So she told me, she said, you got the GPA, the SAT and the ACT don't matter. Mm-hmm. You're good. Yeah. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> um, nah, not the case. Came back to bite me in the ass, you know. Um, but at the same time, uh, like I said, down the line, I'm like, you know what? That's all me. That's on me to go to Google, <laughs> type in, is this required, regardless of your GPA? You know, and yeah. that's what that's what I teach mainly with the boys more than anything, man. It's it's mm. man, look, accountability more than anything. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care what mm-hmm. that person says, that person says, hey, even what I say, bro, Google it, ask your parents, whatever you need, but do your research, you know, at the same time. But go ahead. You said um you said a key word. And I, I want you to elaborate on the importance of it. Why is accountability so important? I mean, you got to own it. You got to own it. You ain't going to never get past something. Like I said, that carried me to I was 23. And here we are talking about something that when I'm 17. Uh, I'm 17 years old. A counselor tell me, hey, you ain't got to worry about it. I go up in SAT, whatever, then, you know? I'm, well, I'm 23 years old. I'm up in Colorado. I'm mentoring kids, and I'm still walking with it. How am I telling them, hey, do your work. Go to class. Give me your grade checks on Wednesdays so I can check your grades and make sure you're doing what you're doing because I ain't finna go out here and tell these coaches, hey, you know, he's the guy if you ain't even doing it in the classroom. So, therefore – how the hell can I tell somebody to be accountable if I ain't, you know what I'm saying, doing it myself? But main thing I'm saying is 
it was a six year gap and where I held something because I wasn't accountable. And I don't want my boys to go through. So I feel mm. like my best um my best teachings are our own experiences. Facts. Yeah. I, I appreciate you sharing that. And that and that's real. You know what I mean? Cause this is why um I had published my second book called Misinformed mm -hmm. for us, because so many of us are misinformed, you know, whether we don't have the right guidance, you know, that entitlement, whatever, bad grades. But we see a lot of the best athletes, you know, not fulfill their full potential because of grades and things like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, for, for you to share that, I, I definitely appreciate that. You know what I mean? And like you said, our, our own experiences, you know, we can pass those on to, to, to the young guys, yeah. you know, More than but, uh, you know, life, life, life goes on, you know, you, you keep pushing, you keep yeah. grinding. Yeah. Talk to us about that journey, you know, going from Long Beach City College mm -hmm. to Mesa. Man. Still an idiot. <laughs> Still ain't figured it out yet. Uh, great. Still ain't figured it out yet. Um, doing my thing, playing, you know what I'm saying? I was at practice, always there. I just didn't take it serious. I just didn't care. Um, mm. So my first year there, I was still rehabbing my knee. I wasn't ready yet. So I redshirted that first year. Um, and, you know, I also needed to get myself together because of the Cheney events that happened, pushing me to go to Mesa in the summer of 20. Um, 2014, I want to say. Um, my my cousin, my cousin died right in front of me. Uh, I, I call him, I call him my cousin, uh, Lofo, and that's again where this comes from. Um, jumped in front of a bullet for me. Uh, I actually took one here as well, but at the same time, it was a night where we going out doing our thing, and some dudes, you know, doing what they do. You know, it's the streets, it's L.A., it's what they do. Um, that whole that whole night was crazy. It, I mean, it still, it still flashes in my head to this day, but all I know is I took one here and my cousin jumped in front of one. Um, lost his life. I left, I left literally three, four weeks right after that. Um, so I'm still, I'm, I'm jumping into Mesa. I'm like, you know, I need to get away. My knee not right. My brain ain't right. Mm. Not, nothing's right, you know? So I'm trying to figure it out. The redshirt was actually the best thing for me. Um, mm. The next year, I started getting better. My knee's fine. No brace. I'm rolling. I feel like I'm back to me. Um, they actually had – they were using me to where they were throwing me in the backfield, and that just felt like home because um, that's where I started off. So it was like slot and backfield. I mean, we were loaded. Marcus Hines, Vanell Moon, you know, all those guys. So at the same time, um, shit, DJ Hubbard, man, that boy was back. <laughs> uh, David Tan as well. Yeah, we was loaded, bro. Um, but yeah, so that that second year, I um I pretty much picked things up. I got I got a lot better. Um, but things with my mom started picking up. And I didn't like it. It wasn't sitting right with me. She's all, all the way in South Carolina. Uh, my youngest sister, she going crazy. I'm like, man, my dad doing his thing in Virginia. I'm like, I ain't right. I need to move closer. So that's what pushed me to leave Mesa and go to South, uh, South Carolina to go to Limestone. I originally wanted to play there. But then when I, I walked in there and I met Mike Furry and Roy Roundtree, and um, again, like I said, the turn in my career as far as like my knee is fine now, but I got other things starting to pick up. My shoulder pops out, torn labrum, get that fixed. Then I push over the limestone and I'm finally cleared. I'm like, I'm going to play in the spring, you know. Um, next thing you know, my hamstring rips. I'm like, Jesus Christ. But um, I was about to be done. I was like, man, I'm done. I'm just going to go to school and be done. I don't know. I'm going to be done. Um, but then Zoe becomes a thing, <laughs> uh, my daughter. Um, so I'm like, 
the whole plan of plan don't look right because I keep getting hurt. I don't know why I keep getting hurt. That's what drove me also to to major in kinesiology because I wanted to know what kept happening to my body. Mm. Yeah, I, I just I just had to know because I was like, this research ain't working. I'm doing this rehab and it ain't working. Talking to these people ain't working. Let me figure it out. Um, who would have known that it would have pushed me to where I am now? But um, when I was there and all the, the events with Zoe happened, and I found out that she, you know, she was going to be born. Um, I was like, man, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm lost. I'm, I'm completely lost. Uh, I sat down with Roy Roundtree. Uh, he told me, he said, bro, don't quit. Um, just sit next to him. I was like, what you mean? He's like, just walk with me. Just sit next with me. Come in here when you leave classes. If you ain't got no more classes, just come in. Man, I was coming in every day. I was sitting in on coaches' meeting. I'm sitting next to, uh, my, again, Mike Furry is a wide receiver coach for the Bears. Um, uh, Roundtree is actually at Grand Valley State right now. Um, Larry Blackstone, uh, Barry Blackstone, the twins. I mean, I'm just around, you know, and I'm just, the minds, I'm like, man, I, every day I'm just, just right, just right. I ain't even realized. Dude, I'm just finding my passion, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize it. I'm just learning and, you know, the knowledge that I had. And then that year, he went to, uh, where did Roundtree go? He took a job. See, he went to CSU Pueblo. It, this oh. was after Pueblo. So after this Pueblo. This was after Pueblo. Because mm -hmm. I was a player at Mesa, and he was the coach there. Yeah. He went to Limestone. We both went to Limestone right at the same time. It's kind of crazy. Nice. Nice. Went, uh, Indiana State after that. Sycamores. Okay. Okay. There. Yep, 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 yep. Indiana State. So he went there, and I thought Mike Furry was going to bring in a wide receiver coach. You know, he's mm -hmm. gone. He was like, he came to me and he said, uh, I'm going to be the wide receiver guy, but I'm not going to bring somebody else in. He said, if they need me to have a title to it, I'll take it. But you're going to be, you're going to, we're going to I'll pay you this money. Me and my, my grad assistant, um, be the wide receiver coach. I'm going to mold you into it. I'm like, oh. All right. okay. So things are starting to open up. Um, I did that. So this is year two coaching and I'm, you know, I'm doing school. And then he also was like, because I'm in practice, I'm, you know, I'm the energetic young coach. So I'm doing stuff with him. He's like, Dude, you can move. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. I told you I still got it. I'd just be scared to go because I think I'm going to get hurt or something, you know, because um, of the chronic injuries. Um, he's like, you want to go to uh, you want to go to uh, Georgia in like a month or a month and a half? Well, I'll figure out the dates. I was like, for what? He was like, give you a tryout. I was like, All right, cool. Yeah. A month and a half. I'll get ready for it. I just started training myself. Uh, my boy Russell kind of helped me out at school. Um, man, I went down there, had a tryout, and then I got you know signed onto an arena team. You know, right. so I'm I'm playing arena ball, finishing my senior year, and coaching at the same time. So I'm just and the thing is, I'm playing for a team in Texas. Nice. <laughs> so it's and I'm doing school and I'm I'm getting it done. I'm getting it done. I'm finally figuring it out. You know, it's kind of crazy. Um. Um, so after, you know, doing that, finally graduated, um, Mike Ferry took the job in Chicago and, um, I don't think I had another injury, but I think I said I wanted to be a dad. Mm -hmm. right, I came to the conclusion. I graduated. I loved the coaching thing. It was great. And I was like, this might take, this might take me a long place, you know, a long way. Um, and my daughter's in Colorado, so that's when yeah. I made that shift. I mean, I literally left uh, two days right after I I uh, graduated college. I mm. hit the road, um, flew down to Colorado, basically coming back, but to start a new journey. Um, yeah. Get thrown into that dad world, man. <laughs> it was a different man. It was a different breed. I was just, you know, just football. Football, football, school. No, yeah. that. Um, yeah, it was. 
that journey, that college journey was needed for me, I would say. For sure. For sure. And even becoming a dad, man, it's the, it's the highest calling. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's a lot of us who are, you know, young fathers out here like myself. You know, I have two girls. Um, so I, I definitely know how it is, man. I have mine. Um, I have my oldest, you know, my junior year. Yeah. You know, we were about to play Washington. Yep, we were about to play the Huskies, man. She was about to be born, so I had to make a decision. I ended up going to the hospital. <laughs> Just left all my stuff pregame. And it was cool because it's like, oh, you know, you think like, especially with so many amazing coaches, you think they're going to be mad or whatever. And they're like, man, they was clapping me up because they know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, and and that's dope, bro. So, you know, salute on that and just being a great young dad out here, man. Uh, it's love. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, so can you name some of those coaches who were in that room again? I know you said uh, Roy Roundtree. Roy Roundtree, Mike Furry, um, Larry Blackstone, Barry Blackstone. Um, those were the huge impacts to me. And honestly, I'm forgetting one. Fernando Bryant. Nice. Um, he was so – man, Fernando got so much knowledge, man. He played, at, played, Bama, played for Bama uh -huh. back in the day. Man, he the way he walked, he walked like he played from Nick, uh, Nick, man. You know, yeah. he played in the league too. I just can't remember uh, what team, but man, those 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 names, man. What was what was the most important thing Mike Fury taught you, man? Hey, boy, <laughs> my dog just jumped up. Um, man, he taught me. He taught me. He taught me mainly. How to so I would say all right so it's kind of funny because I, I like to say that Roy and Mike, I mean their games weren't weren't alike obviously because uh, one you know got a taller frame one's an outside guy one's more of a slot but Furry taught me I would say the, the technical way how to be a technician how to you know take pride in your steps um, like that's why now I only teach steps. I don't teach. I don't teach yardage. I only teach steps because of how much he hammered that in my head. Um, t just really teaching me the route tree and how to be a perfectionist with turning a curl and running it five ways, taking a dig and running it four ways, taking a post and being able to run it three different ways. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like come back having five different ways to run it. Um, route tree taught me the finesse of it, man. How to, how to how to run he called it the scoop <laughs> how to scoot around and still be running full speed and finding holes is it's, it's absolutely crazy because uh if you ever talk to him you gotta have to ask him about the one-on-one -on -one between me and him it's pretty bad yeah 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 that's my guy I'm a michigan legend by the way people oh yeah <laughs> yeah Man, he got me bad. I don't know if he still got that video. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. oh boy, he did. He came off and skip, skip, pop, pop. I was like, I mean, my knees just kind of went in, and I was like, yeah, I'm cool. And yeah. all he did was run a slam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, and that's that's when I found out about you know I call it the scoop, or I, mm -hmm. uh, I tell him to skip, skip at him. Yeah, that's what I learned it from. And I watched him do it over and over at Michigan. I watched him mm -hmm. do a little bit of yep. time he had at Cincinnati. And I'm like, man, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. If you perfect that thing, you see, you might see Ish do it a lot. He'd be coming out, he'd be coming out, scoop, scoop, and then he'll do his work. Um, yeah. I love it, man. That boy, he, he figured it out. So I, I love that you were able to, you know, be around these, these great men and, you know, and turn yourself being a great man, um, soaking up all the knowledge and information and passing it on to these youngins. Um, I, I truly admire that. One more question on that same subject, just in life, you know, just in life as a man, as a person, Roy Roundtree, what was the most important lesson he taught you? Hmm. Man, um, he taught me so much because, you know, it's crazy because I sat down with him um, when I found out about my daughter, uh, I cried with him. Man, I, that was that was that was my guy. He was there for me so much. Um, 
he really, he really, truly, more than anything, just taught me that you know, just because of all these things happening to you, life ain't against you. Right, and I'm here to get you. You know, that's just it's just your journey. Your mm-hmm. journey is your journey, but the way the way you continue to keep standing up for what you do, even while life is still pushing you in the back, he said that's more important than anything. Holding your uh, integrity, char- character, you know, more than anything, um, morals. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's like I don't care. You know, get it out. I ain't even trying to hear it, G. Like, get up, yeah. get on up out of here. Go handle your mm-hmm. business. Your dad now. I ain't even trying to hear it. He's like, your dad before me. You know? Yeah. Um, over and over. I come in there. What's good? You know, we talk to me. We always at the end. You done? Get out. Yeah. It's enough, you know. But I knew yeah, I knew yeah. it was always out of love, but mainly more than anything, it's just um how to how to stand up, how to continue to keep standing up. For sure. For hey, sure. Uh, Every time you fall, get back up. That's why I love the diamond more than anything. I mean, it's just, I feel like my whole life has just been pressure. Mm. I, just, I just feel like my whole life, bro. That's the logo? Yeah. yeah Hold that up. That, so that's what the diamond represents. Yeah. My Talk whole about life, it. bro. My whole life. This, I, You know, it's funny because I was talking to my mom one day, uh, and I just, I, I caught myself saying, like, why, why me? Why does it keep happening to me? Why does this keep happening to me? Why, 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 why? Because this is what everybody don't even know. I, I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of put my head down a little bit when you said uh, being a good dad. When my daughter was around, I felt like I was the best dad that I could have possibly been. I could have been better, obviously. There's always room to grow. But um, her mom is taking that right from me. You know, still to this day. Um, um, but at the same time, it's like, if I would have never told you that, do you see me walk with it? I would, I would never, you know what I'm saying? You would never know. Yeah. Unless I tell you. And it's every day I'm out there doing my thing. I'm coaching these boys. <laughs> I'm traveling. I'm putting these boys on the map promoting them, I'm doing that. I still ain't seen my daughter going on two years. Mm. And at the same time, all I remember is Roundtree saying, stand up. Because what if she popped up at this door right now? What do I want her to see? Mm. So I keep saying, why me, why me, why me? And I'm like, Maybe it was meant for me. I don't know. Maybe because of all the pressure that I dealt with, maybe it was meant for me to go through this because I can handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, it, it kills me. It, I sit in my room and cry. <laughs> yeah. Hard coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. You know, it, and, you know it's, it's a different side, man. And, you know, that's why... You know, I tell these boys, man, take pride in what you do, man. Take pride in what you do and love everybody. Love, not unlove everybody. Love your close ones. Love them good. Love them till you can't no more. Take care of them. Do everything you can for them. But also, at the same time, don't give them no handouts. Um, I feel like, feel like you giving people handouts, I feel like you create a bad habit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, if I would have known that, you know, the last time I was going to see my daughter was me and her at the mall or something, I would have bought her, you know, that big teddy bear that she wanted. You know, I would have bought her those shoes that she asked for. I thought I had a week to get the money up to go get it, you know. It's just a lot of a lot of stuff that eats me up. To this day, yeah. Know? Yeah. No, man, even, you know, being vulnerable and sharing the real, like, yeah. um, but that's a great example, like stand up. And there's power behind that stand up. Cause like you said, what if she does come up? You know, how do you wanna how do you want her to see you? You know what I mean? And you know, th- to me, like I said, I, I still stand on that. You being a, a great father. Um, and more so you you you're not just a father to your own, you a father to 
all these young men out here, you know what I mean? It's a lot of young guys who who go through it, who, you know, you giving them rides, you buying them shoes, you helping them out, you giving them that game, you buying them food, you know what I mean? They can come stay with coach. You know, all these different things, man, that I, that I, I truly admire, you know what I mean? And, and you getting better, you could be better and say, forget the world, yeah. but you still using that light and that love inside you and you, you know, you letting them, um, you giving it to others, you know what I mean, and and I think that's that's incredible, bro. Absolutely, for real. Got you. We the best. For real, for, yeah. We the best teachers, bro. Yeah. And they for come, facts, bro. Come with these stories, I'm like, coach, it's just so hard, and they don't even know. <laughs> I'm like, go ahead. I'm listening to you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna knock your feelings. You know. Yeah. I'm not gonna knock your story. I'm not gonna knock your path, but. Man, it's worse out there, bro. It Facts. is. It is. Facts. I, I stay firm on it, you know. But I, I try. I try to be respectful to everybody. Yeah. Everybody's journey, uh, yeah. especially with the boys, man. You know, they're so emotional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're emotional. And, yeah. Uh, they wear it all on their shoulders. Uh, I learn from uh, more more than anybody. Uh, John Marine just like, stop. I'm showing everything, you know, like you can you can walk and you're gonna be having a bad day, but you don't have to tell everybody that. So yeah. I, I learned to start doing I'm getting better at it, but uh I try to keep I catch the boys doing it. Like I said, we we the best teachers. I mean we do it all. <laughs> We've seen it Facts. all. Facts. Yeah, man, no, that's that's real. That is real. I wanted to ask you, bro, like yeah. just Everything you've been through, you know, you, you continue to ball. Um, one thing that I like, um, and this is what we try to tell the young guys is, like, don't despise small beginnings. Mm. Everybody wants to start at the top. I, know, I mean, the goal is to always go D1. But one thing I like about you is everything you just told me, you said it with pride. So, like, limestone, bro. Like, that's a, a, a smaller school, bro. But you went out there. And you handle business, you know what I mean? And 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 you embraced that, you know what I mean? And you got it in your bio and everything. You wear it with pride. Like, yes, this, there we go. There you go. You know what I mean? And one thing I like about that, and I want you to talk about it, is just about not despising small beginnings. Because when you went there, look at the people you met and look where they're at now. Mm -hmm. Man, uh, it's crazy because it's like the situation with Travis Hunter. Man, these small schools got more meaning, you know? Um, I don't know if Limestone is considered a HBCU, but it's down there in that area with, you know, uh, with all those schools down there, like uh, uh, South Carolina Upstate, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, it's a bunch of surround. I just can't think of it right now. But, like, I, I saw a different side, man. You know, I'm over in CMU, and I'm over in California, and I come down to South Carolina, and I'm at the closest uh, HBCU that I that I've seen. I'm like, man, I'm learning so much that it was like I'm changing without you know at, without even trying at the same time. But those mm -hmm. those damn coaches, though, man, I swear it'd be it'd be it'd be it'd be some good coaches. Some really, really good coaches at some small schools, man. I tell my boys that all the time. They always talking about, like you said, D1, D1, D1. But I feel like those guys are just good recruiters. Mm -hmm. It's rare that it's all of them up there are legit, you know. Mm -hmm. they, be, they be some legit-ass fucking coaches in, in D2. Like, for mm -hmm. uh, we would tussle them, uh, Carson Newman. Uh, Newberry, uh, yeah. you know, uh, all those schools, you know, and it's a lot more that we're going against. Coach, I mean, I've seen some of the best football. It's a chess match, man. Uh, you know, and the, a lot of people don't understand that, but at the same time, they don't understand the Division One. I. I feel like everybody's won again, chasing that back. Um, they chasing, hey, the resume booster. Or, yeah. I mean, at the same time, they're a good recruiter. They can bring yeah. in a five-star, but are they the best guy? Are they the best teacher? 
Are they the best mm -hmm. technical? Are they the best one that's teaching you all this stuff that you need as far as real wise? But are they teaching you the neural part of it? Yeah. You think faster. That's why I like that. I, I honestly feel like the hardest position to train is a running back. It's the hardest because how can I get this running back to, to, to think and react to the game? Because everything he does is reacting to the game. You could tell him run through the beat gap, but the beat gap, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You're a running back, bro. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So it's like when I take on my running backs, I tell them, look, I'm just going to have some bags. We're going to work on handoffs. And I'm going yeah. to make you understand that this game is all up here and it's all instincts, right? Yeah. So if I'm moving this bag, if I got this bag set up and I'm telling you to go this way and I'm moving this bag, making you react, and I'm moving this bag, and that's the best way I can get you in the real game life situations because I'm not trying to waste your time. Facts. We can go in the backyard and do cone drills. Yeah. <laughs> but if I can put you in real time, and I can get you uncomfortable because that's all I care about. I want to get you uncomfortable. I want you frustrated. I want everybody to finish my session like, like uh, yesterday. Ish. I know when he pull his mask up, he in serious mode. Mm -hmm. He had his mask down. He was just chilling. He started getting pissed off. He pulled it up. Then he got, got irritated, 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 you know. By the time we finished the session, dude was over there. I want to leave, Coach. I'm about to clean up. I'm like, about five minutes, we'll leave. It's all right. So what's wrong with you? You know, he always got a smile on his face. Charlie kid. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm cool. I said, uh-huh. I said, yeah. yeah, okay, right now. You think about the drill. He's like, I don't know why I was messing it up. I said, it's cool. You figured it mm -hmm. out. I love Thanks. it. I feel like I did something. I mean, because we can all put everybody through the lab, man. Yeah, you know, I'll do it like my quarterbacks. Man, how can I put your body in an uncomfortable situation? Mm -hmm. And how can I how can I wake your foot speed up? I mean, that's easy. But how can I put you in a real life situation? That's all I want to do. That's all mm -hmm. I want to do. I want to continue to hammer that. That way, when they get out there, and it's ten coming this way, eight coming this way, six coming this way, we just react. We out. Yeah. My guy asked uh, Diego um, not too long ago. I said. Uh, when you was out there in that uh, bowl, uh, the All American game up wherever you played in California, I think it was so far. Um, I was like, I saw you make that spin move. You know, you kind of pressed it and then hit the spin move and hit the edge. I was like, when you did that, I was like, I've seen you do that move before. And I seen it kind of look like you planted, planted, and you was thinking about it, and then you finally did it. I said, that time it looked like you just boom, boom, and just spun. I said, mm -hmm. I like the drills that I, that we are doing helps you react like that in the game. Or you now I'm just asking because I, I want to know so that I can continue to do it or, hey, pull back. Um, mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, 100 percent. He was like, I ain't even I never spin. All right, cool. It's fine. All right. That's what I needed to know. Um, no, I do it with kick returns and punt returns. <laughs> yeah, look, I feel like it's it 100%. Uh, again, real type situation. That's all right. So, the the channel four, the bottom of it is a uh, renovation studio. So, mm. really channel dot four, you know, I got a dot, so I don't know copywriting, right? Uh, channel dot four renovation studio, you know, renovate, trying to change, trying to change. You know, I'm trying to figure out how can I change. It. How can I put you in an uncomfortable situation and and, and, and create and create a diamond out of it? You know what yeah. I'm saying? It, I'm, I'm putting you under pressure. I'm, I'm making this shit as complicated as possible. Yeah. Let's figure it out. What's been the what's been the biggest highlight from the the, the channel four journey? Man, getting phone calls like Coach T, I want you to come to the Pac-12 championship game, man. You've done so much for me, and I just I, – I need you there. Yeah. Man, I didn't do this for you, bro. I, 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 you did it. Nah, Coach, hush. Just come out here, please. You know, 
that, yeah. that right there. Like, because again, I I don't take no credit for these boys. I boost, I mm. boost, I boost, I boost, but I do not take their credit because they the ones that play. I wish I could go play right now, but Facts. they the ones that do that. Um, Facts. It ain't got nothing to do with me, man. I just smile and I just watch. Mm. It, you know when it. You know when the boys. Man, when they get to all the all the things that they dream of, that they want, or I got Shay come up to my door on Christmas, and he dropping off a Boise State jacket, mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes me smile, you know. But yeah. more than anything, I got a vision behind it, and right now, it's gonna get my daughter back first, because uh, that gotta happen, and it's gonna happen. Uh, but for the most part. I got a, uh, I got a vision for it. My dream is to be yeah. an offensive coordinator, you know, in the NFL. That's what I want to do. That's if I get that, I feel like I've marked myself and I've done it. Um, Thanks. But um, I got a lot of, got a lot of plans um, for my business. I wanted to expand. I wanted to reach out. Um, leadership development. Uh, I take pride in. It. Yeah, so do you I have, do you have a like a favorite quote? Or like a mantra that you live by? I just always wake up and just say, today is a great day to be great. <laughs> um, if that's my mantra or my, my, uh, my quote, then I guess that's what it is. But I, I say that all the time. Um, the boys will hear me. Today is a great day to be great. Yeah. Hear me all the time. Talk about it. Great. Hey, every day I wake up, I'm, I'm going to make my bed. I, I was great at it. I was great at it. <laughs> I started off and it's a success. It's a small victory. It's a win. It's a win. I've won. I've won the day already from the beginning. All right. Now let's get out this door and let's go. Let's go. Cause let's go. Let's go to the school. I work. I work at uh, Rock Cane High School. Let's go to the school and let's be great with these kids. Um, I work with the special needs kids. Um, I help out with the classes um, outside of the school. And uh, those those special needs kids, man, they're, they're made. <laughs> and it's, again, everybody sees what I do on a day to day, or they might hear something about. Mm -hmm. me. I work with special mm -hmm. needs kids, man, and it's it's a passion for me. And I've done this. I've literally worked with special needs kids uh, since I moved to Colorado because that was my first job at Grand Junction Central. I have done it since. Everybody says that. Um, it's a job that you can get into and do, you know, because coaches, some coaches don't have the teacher's license and, you know, it's an entry job, right? Nah, man, I've continued. I've stuck with it because I love it. I just, I truly, I truly enjoy it. 100%. Um, it's the highest calling. Bro. It, highest calling. It's amazing. Like, even if I'm having a bad day, I just look at them, they just smile. Just having a good time. Like, what the hell am I? He can't even walk. Mm -hmm. I gotta help him to the bathroom. And I'm over here complaining. I ain't got nothing to complain about. Yeah, I got one thing to complain about, and that's my daughter. But other than that, I ain't got nothing else to complain about, man. Uh, and that it's cool. Mm. It's all good. Um, but uh man. Working with those, uh, working in the school, I feel like it balances me. Yeah. Um, like I said, and then I, you know, from that point on, when I leave the school, I'm with, I'm with, the, I'm with the boys from that point on. But I tell them, man, just I don't, I don't care if you're messing up, or if you're doing this, just be great, bro. Find a way. Find a way. I tell them over and over. Well, coach, I can't do it. Find a way. Just find a way. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't, you know, we, this is not something that is one of these back and forth. It's just find a way. Find a way to be great. That's it. Man, I'm 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 proud of you, bro. Like yeah. from working with you working with these amazing, you know, amazing kids, um with uh special needs, working in special education, man, that's that's the highest calling for real. You know what I mean? Um and into that you also helping you know, develop these these young men like that's that's the highest calling. Um, and I'm and I'm definitely proud of you for that. 
I, I, I mean, I mean it too, man. And I just, you know, as we keep going, like, what, like, what would be one word to describe you? I'm a gift. Um, and I say that because I adapt to all. So you get your gift, right? No matter who's the gift from, right? Um, we all are different. So my whole thing is um, when I come to people, whoever it is, especially with kids, um, it's an adult, uh, my athletes, um, anybody outside of my circle, man, my friends, whatever, um, I'm always adapting to that person. Uh, I'm always going to. So I like to say I'm a gift because, like I said, uh, part of Channel 4 renovation is changing. So in order for me to be able to reach all, I got to be able to adapt to all. Mm. Um, I don't want to turn a kid away. I don't ever want to. I don't care if it's, it's five star and no star. Uh, I want to uh, develop every single one of them. Um, and that's the difference between coaching nowadays. There's good coaches, but everybody don't know how to develop talent. You know, um, and I feel like that's what the higher up level is. I feel like they are really good teachers. They're really good coaches. They are not good developers. That's why they don't take guys that need to be developed. They take the star power. They just teach this part of it. So, um, my whole my whole thing is I got Dante Capilungo at Dakota Ridge, right? I can't come at Dante the same way I would come at um, uh, Jerry Jackson. Two different kids. I won't be able to reach both of them the same way. I got to talk to Jerry a different way than I talk to Dante. Not because they're black and white, but because of the simple fact that Dante is a different person. And to be able to reach him, he might be a person that um, is a little bit more open. You know, Jarek might be the person where I got to dig and claw and take my time because he's been hurt by people, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then communication. I had to communicate with him different. Um, mm -hmm. So I like, I would say that I'm a gift because, I mean, at the same time, I'm going to do something for you. I don't know what it is because I got to be able to figure out who you are. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's I feel like that's what I was put here for. Man. Um, my mom said I got a a golden, a pure, a pure golden heart. Facts, facts. She said, facts. Moms, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta stop doing this, man. You you can't if you can't do it, you can't. Well, I ain't trying to hear that. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> hey, yeah. Oh, I'm coming. Like, that's that's my boy. They need me. I'm going to be there for him. Like, ish. Like, coach, what do I say to this? Coach? How do I word this? Uh, you know, Cal just called me, coach. You know, he called me before USC offered him. It's like, coach, they offered. And I was like, who? It's like, SC. And I was like, no way. And he's like, coach, they did it. I was like, hey, man. Hang up this phone and go talk to your grandma. Like, yeah. <laughs> one love, bro. I see you tomorrow. But Thanks. go share that moment with her. I'm good. Go share that moment with her because she's the one that's there for you continuously. Um, Thanks. My mom, she's everything for me. Uh, she she was my speed coach. She was she was my my, my life coach. She, she I mean she still is. Um, teaches me everything. Through and through, sports, life, you name it. Um, she uh, she tells me over and over, you you just like me, but you worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you got so many of those boys, and it's boys versus girls. You know, she was mm -hmm. girls and track girls. Um, you know, they don't need as much as boys, and I swear, they eat, they eat, they eat. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm pretty sure you know that, but. Um, yeah, man, it's, so it's a journey, man. 
if you could do a a Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore of your favorite receivers. Ugh. All time. Just all time now, like where who you who would you have on there that you study that you like? Mm. Who and why? All right, Ramon. Let's see, Ocho. You my one. Um, I he invented route running, bro. I know, I know, it's people before him, but I'm talking about I'm talking about my way. You know, I like, I like, I like, I like how, and that's the way you play. It's my way. You know, uh, no matter what. Bro could be the smallest. And you see videos of him taking on Ray Lewis, bro. You don't care. That's how I am, bro. Like, I don't care. I don't care what it is. I'm running through you. Uh, it's period. You know, I got I don't I don't play around with people. I don't like to play around with people. I'm I'm gonna tell you, like I, I'm a visionary. I love what I do. And and I'm good at it. And um, and I feel like Ocho, like, you know, when he do his thing, bro, it's him. Can't nobody, can't nobody mimic that, you know. They can mimic it in their own way, but it's him. Child, please, you know all that stuff, man. I, I just, I love. It. Um, after that, I mean, Megatron, bro. Mm. Child, nasty. You can't guard it. <laughs> what could I you stop do? him? What could you do? Um, okay, okay. And I actually met him at Limestone. Um, okay. It, he came to our, our signing day when Mike Furry had him come down because they played together. Um, and he basically called out the signees, each signee. Did that. Man, I shook that man. I'm talking finger this way, finger, <laughs> this, way, finger this way. I mean, it's the nastiest thing I've ever seen, but it's so large. I'm like, dude, are you kidding yeah. me? And he's huge. But, you know, you watch the film. It, yeah. <laughs> Uh, third, Steve Smith. Ooh, okay. Yeah, reminds me of myself. Nasty attitude. I don't care how small I am. I play outside receiver, not slot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what I tell people over and over. I play outside. I don't play no slot. <laughs> I'm nasty. I don't care. I'll come block you. I'll throw you around. I'm going to go get the ball. You're going to have to bring three to tackle me. I don't care. That's how I feel. Um, Steve Smith, he nasty, man. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, dude. And you don't see that. People, people, nah. people don't respect Steve, bro. Um, He's a man. Four. Last one. Those are my top three for sure. That's too easy. I mean, I'm all about giving praise to the people that uh, that started it all. I mean, Randy. I mean, there we go. Got it. Got to make sure that Randy. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. That's a that's a solid four. You work with so many amazing athletes. You're developing a lot of great young men um, doing great work out here. Can you talk about the importance of being an asset and what does it look like to be an asset versus a liability? I mean, being an asset, I feel like it just comes with someone that you – I feel like I can count on you. Um, can, I, can I count on you? Um, we, we – we look at we look at our team and I mean you're a liability if I gotta figure out if I got I mean we ain't even gotta go as far as absentee. You can be present at every single practice and still be a liability. I mean you're a liability mm. if you're not um uh, you know learning your craft. I mean uh, you're a liability because you're stopping before I tell you to run through the line, not to the line. You're a liability. Um I, I can't get you the ball when the game's on the line because you stop before the line. Um, I want mm. guys to go through the line. Guys that go through the line are the assets. Those guys are the assets. Those are the guys that I can count on to put my word. Like I can call Oregon and say, Terrence is the guy. And I'm going to tell you that he's the guy. And 
I, he's an asset because I, I'm okay with putting my name on the line. I'm okay with putting my name on the line for Ty. I'm okay with putting my name on the line for all those guys. You know, that you becoming a liability is is simply off of a want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to take the uh, the extra the, t- the extra rep just because Coach said ten. I mean, you can't just you know. Or if Coach does say ten, we don't we do that quick little. No, I mean, we just lock it up and maybe just hold it up there real quick, just for a second, you know, just because I, I'm cool going that extra mile. Um, mm. uh, I'm I'm cool with staying after with my QB. So, yeah. Like, you know, being yeah. a mess at, and I've been, you know, yeah. I, I really just feel like it truly comes down to can I count on you? Are you going to, are you going to do, do the thing? And you don't even have to do the extras. You just do what they tell you to do. Do what everybody asking of you and be yeah. trustworthy. And, and I feel like you're an asset, bro. It's not that. Facts. I feel like Facts. 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 I want to ask you, are you a cage breaker? And what cages have you broken out of? Yeah, I'm definitely a cage breaker. One hundred percent. Man, you know what? <laughs> coming out of uh, coming out of Long Beach City, going through what I had to go through, and breaking through that, um, being able to go to Colorado Mesa and being able to 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 simply put on put on a show, man. Put on a show for everybody, and this literally put on a show for my parents because they had no idea. Put on a show for my parents. Put on a show for uh, my family, everybody, uh, coaches. Let them know that I am ready to go. And they don't know that I just, you know, it took a bullet. Um, I feel like not only that, but my daughter, man, I am a case breaker every day. <laughs> my daughter is still to this day, you know, as not I've not I've not seen her. Since September of 2020, um, and being able to overcome that every single day, and still be progressing, um, it's not like I'm, um, you know, like my life roller coaster. <laughs> not nah, my career, man. It's been, it's been progressing, man. And then, and then to you, you know, just even hearing that word, like. What would you, what what is it what does it mean to be a cage breaker to you? Uh, being able to overcome adversity and turn adversity into a diamond. Yes, yes. And 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 you are a cage breaker in Channel Four Renovation Studios. Sure. Um, you know, no pressure, no diamonds. So for you to even create that, um. And now what Channel 4 is doing. We started the Cage Breakers just for those out there who've been put in that box, you know, that cage and the breakout, you know, whatever it is. You know, my cage coming up was my anger. It kept me from a, a lot of missed opportunities. Um, another cage I had was my fear of flying. Kept me from a lot of opportunities and schools I probably could have went to, but I was caged. Um, and I'm still breaking out of cages daily. You have created something for all of us in channel four. Can we talk about channel four renovation studios? Let's talk about it. Um, the name channel four renovation studio, uh, channel four originates from, uh, OG big homie, uh, LOC folk. Uh, good man. <laughs> uh, you know, he's, he's gone today, but, uh, that's where the four originates. Um, I always feel like he's with me because of what he did. Um, he's always behind me. I'm the third, so he's the fourth. You know, I walk with him. Um, the uh, renovation, man. Whenever anybody comes to me, uh, kid, athlete, could be anybody. Um, I want to change you. I want to find a way to adapt to you and and figure out how can we progress and get your goals. But at the same time, how can I, how can I, how can I take you from this 
and turn you into, like I say, a diamond. Um, my whole thing is, is I don't want to work on the stuff that you're good at. I want to exploit all your weaknesses. I want to make you uncomfortable. Um, that's the only way that I can neurology, you know, right here, neuro, only way that I can continue to progress you. Because, I mean, at some point, the foot speed gets you nowhere, you know? The, the cone drills get you nowhere. That, that same ladder drill gets you nowhere. At some point, you have to progress and change your game into something different. Um, the diamond itself is LOC for me. It's all of our, all of our trauma, our pressure, all in one. And uh, it's greatness, 100%. Um, C4, my my boy Greg is saying uh, Omega Flex. He just I don't know where C4, you know C4, you know uh, that's how that uh, nickname came apart. Um, but it's actually kind of funny. Um, the fans, I used to have a logo uh, back when I played arena. The fans kind of kept saying tune in to Channel Four, so it was like a TV with the four, it was kind of cool. Thought it was dope. Because every time I played, like I said, Steve Smith, I'm angry, I'm mad at you, I want you out of my way, and I'm going to abuse you as I go through. Like, I, that's just how I play. I can't, I can't, I can't help it. I can't Thanks. help it. Facts. Man, no, that's, that's dope. Shout out to Channel 4 renovation studios um doing great things out here um impacting great lives and they will continue to do so last question what advice would you give to a young athlete out here who who wants to go to the next level um who wants to be great what advice would you give them man uh i would tell them it's like i tell people when they uh when they look at team full gorilla for instance uh, don't let anybody uh, tell you how to run your, 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 your career, right? You need people around you to be able to make this thing work. You need connections. You need multiple voices. You need multiple teachings to get to the next level. In order to, get, to be that 1%, you have to literally 100% have so many people in your corner. If I would have known that a while ago, I wouldn't have been so closed-minded. Um, I tell these kids all the time, uh, well, I can't play for this and because of such and such. Well, you know what? Uh, like I've even had conversations with different individuals. I want to work with every single one of y'all. I want to work with every single one of y'all in a way, um, not necessarily me and you work together, but we got to work together on these kids. We have to. Um, it's very important that Braden Dorman works with Jenkins Elite, and he's also playing with Team Full Gorilla. It's very important because Jenkins, Jenkins Elite is who they are. And I need, I need Cedric Bonner. You know what I'm saying? Those, those, those people I need because they teach what I can't teach. Um, it is, and I would tell that athlete, do not allow anyone to control your control your path. Don't let anybody sit there and tell you that I'm going to take care of you and me only. <clears throat> I tell these boys all the time, if you work for this person, that person is fine. Make sure you are with me when we have something scheduled. But you got to have multiple teachings because you learn different styles. Um, I feel like that's why... Uh, Devontae Adams is a a, a, a go-getter, a playmaker, a route runner, and also, at the same time, a possession catcher. Because of the simple fact, uh, he probably has a teacher, a teacher, and a teacher for all these different categories. Hey, I might be a route running coach. I might not be that, that playmaking coach, though. I might not be that speed coach. You know, speed, speed coach might not be my uh, my expertise but you gotta have it you gotta have it like i don't care if you go work with uh landau sports performance they are uh, amazing i mean go for it 
do. But I got the teachings that they can't teach. They just they can't mock me. You know what I'm saying? It I I the, what I teach is original. It's me. It's it's, it's channel four. It's crazy because I've never written down a workout. It's just all here. It's all here, man. It's it's actually crazy because if you come to a team full gorilla practice, you won't see a practice script. It's right here. I'm gonna come through. I'm gonna come it's check out you out here. While you are a cage breaker for somebody who growing up California mm -hmm. in LA. Yeah. You know, um balling out in high school, affected by affected by academics, you know. Um you have to go to a uh, city college. You get shot. Go to you go to Mesa State. Injuries. You go to Limestone. More injuries. <laughs> and instead of completely giving up. How, you know, blame the world. Like, this is the type of stuff people take themselves out for. Like, yep. instead of doing all that, you dig deep, you become coachable by some great coaches, and now you, in turn, are becoming a great coach. Come on, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Come Warren. on, man. Hey, bro. Like, pressure makes diamonds, bro. Pressure makes diamonds, and, and you right. represent that. And Honestly, bro, like, um, you know, lastly, before we exit, man, if you, if you just got one piece of advice you want to share to the world. Wake up every day and accomplish something because it helps you throughout the day, man. That's why I always say today is a great day to be great. I say it and I mean it, you know, uh, I, I, I walk with it. No matter what's going on, no matter what what's trying to knock me back, no matter what's trying to pull me back, I gotta find a way. Cause there's people yeah. counting on me. Yeah. Um, and there's people counting on you, you know. Uh, but uh do we need we need the pressure. We need that pressure. Uh I, I tell the boys embrace every single bit of your adversity. Mm -hmm. Embrace it. And then at the same time, when you overcome every single one of them, uh, uh, enjoy the small victories. Do a little yeah. something for yourself because it helps you. It helps you in your mental. Because if you keep on waiting on that big break, that big break ain't coming. It ain't coming. Yeah. It's too far ahead. So you lose sight of your purpose because you're waiting on that big break. But you got these small victories right here in front of you that are continuously, that can keep you going. So when I sit there and I'm like, man, I just want my daughter so bad, man. I want her so bad. But you know what? If I continue to keep playing and I keep hoping and praying that that's going to happen tomorrow, ain't going to make it. I become suicidal. Yeah. I become suicidal because I think my life has no purpose. Mm. But if I if I realize yesterday, it's just to, that Cal called him the twenty minutes and the interest is high and he think the offer's coming. And guess what? And that's a small victory, man. That is a small victory. Hey, that just gave kind of for purpose. Facts. Um, Facts. And those small victories are important, bro. Y'all hear that? Small victories are important. You know, uh, you know, you, you're doing your thing, bro. And um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming out here, man. Like, I appreciate you coming on the show, um, sharing your experiences. And uh, I love what you're doing, bro. And, and keep it up. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. And um, Cage Breakers, we out here. Yes, sir. They're so proud of me. So proud of me. So proud of me. They're so proud of me.